The election of 1800 marked a turning point in American elections. Thomas Jefferson, the vice president under Adams and a Democratic Republican, challenged incumbent President John Adams, a Federalist. As a Federalist, I believe that we need a strong centralized government that focuses on manufacturing a large military and lots of federal power through implied powers. I disagree. This nation should have a small federal government, small army, and focus on agriculture to be truly self-sufficient. The Constitution should be viewed exactly how it is written and without any implied <laughs> powers. And I'll lower taxes. Yeah, I'm gonna have to go with Jefferson. The Electoral College was set up a bit differently in 1800 than present day. Jefferson and Aaron Burr both received 73 electoral votes and Adams was third with 65 electoral votes. As a Federalist, both Jefferson and Burr had very different opinions from me. However, I really hated Aaron Burr, so I voted for Jefferson. So Thomas Jefferson became the third president of the United States. Jefferson was inaugurated on March 4, 1801. I wanted to get to work right away, but I had a problem. Adams tried to stack the courts before leaving office. Luckily, I was able to block some of his appointments. One judge, William Marbury, wasn't too happy. So as Americans often do, he sued me. The case Marbury v. Madison became one of the most influential cases of American history. It established judicial review. That wasn't the only influence I had on the courts. During my time as president, Congress passed the Seventh Circuit Act of 1807 and increased the number of Supreme Court justices from six to seven. And Congress also ratified the 12th Amendment to the Constitution in light of all the problems we had with the 1800 election. Keeping my campaign promises, I immediately got to work dismantling the Federalist government under Adams. Much to my dismay, I wanted to reduce the national debt and cut away the fat and military expenditures. Unfortunately, cutting the Navy was poorly thought out as pirates pillaged American ships off the Barbary Coast. I told you so. It was barely a kerfuffle. I had it covered. Jefferson reinstated a small navy and sent them to the Barbary Coast in what became known as the First Barbary War. The cuts to government programs meant lower taxes, which proved quite popular among Americans. Go figure. During his presidency, despite wanting to limit the federal government, Jefferson made a series of big moves to expand the U.S. territories. I wanted the U.S. to be a nation of farmers, so I thought to buy New Orleans from France. Napoleon, who had his hands full with the war with Britain, offered instead the Louisiana Territory. What a bargain! The deal of the century! And since I wanted America to be a nation of self-sufficient farmers, this provided plenty of land to do just that. With his new land came the opportunity to expand and explore westward. The land was occupied mainly by a scattering of Native American tribes. I was fascinated with Native Americans, and while I never passed legislation to remove them from their lands, I wanted to assimilate them into American culture. A key component of the civilization program was to engage and trade with the tribes. This was one of the main goals of the Corps of Discovery Expedition, headed by Meriwether Lewis and William Clark. The other goals included finding the Northwest Passage to expedite trade with Asia and map out the newly claimed Louisiana Territory. I believe it to be one of the best accomplishments of my presidency. The Pacific Ocean has to be here somewhere. Like his predecessors, Jefferson chose to run for a second term, this time with running mate George Clinton. I needed a safer option for VP if I wanted to secure a second term. Running against Federalist Charles Pinckney and Rufus King, Jefferson's opponents attacked him for his policies, his lack of religious faith, and his affair with one of his slaves, Sally Hemings. Haters gonna hate. With my second term victory secured, I was free to continue my policies of shrinking the government. I even reached a budget surplus during my second term, which allowed Congress to pass legislation to build a national road. As Jefferson's second term wore on, his popularity declined. While domestically Jefferson was thriving, his foreign policy continued falling apart. Trade relations with Britain soured as they continually seized our shipping vessels. France, with whom we had been on good terms, started to be more aggressive in their trading negotiations. I also tried to buy Florida from Spain, using Napoleon as a broker. Because of these issues, Jefferson backed the Embargo Act of 1807, limiting the imports and exports of both Britain and France. 
That may have been a bad idea in hindsight. The embargo served only to hurt Americans as importing manufactured goods became nearly impossible and relations with Europe declined further. I had to abandon the policy within a year, but by then the economic and diplomatic damage had been done. With foreign and domestic policy falling apart, Jefferson's second term was not living up to the first. I did urge Congress to pass the act prohibiting importation of slaves, officially ending the international slave trade into the U.S. and offering harsh punishments to anyone that failed to comply. Jefferson, who believed the slave trade was inhumane, still owned slaves and never addressed the domestic issue of owning or selling slaves. This remains one of the harshest criticisms of Jefferson to this day. Jefferson finished out his second term with a much lower popularity than his first. But under his presidency, judicial review was established, the national debt shrunk, and the geographical size of the country doubled thanks to his purchase of the Louisiana Territory. In 1808, I decided not to run again. Under the precedent set by Washington, I believe that executives should have limited and finite turns. Plus, I had other things I wanted to do. Despite controversy and his botched foreign policy, Jefferson remains one of the most revered and studied presidents of our time.